The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Now that we're in the third season of The Ben Heck Show, we'd love to get some feedback from you, our viewers, on how you feel about the changes we've made. Please go to www.revision3.com forward slash TBHS survey and spend a few moments taking this anonymous survey. Your feedback is very important to us. Thank you. And now, back to your regularly scheduled episode. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to cover 3D design and printing. Our design application of choice will be Autodesk's 123D Design, a free app available online. We'll design an object, print, and then use it. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Bad News, I'd like to talk about a Kickstarter reward I just got, the DigiSpark. I actually got like 10 of them, complete with headers and whatnot. And what they did with the DigiSpark is an AT tiny microcontroller on a little circuit board, and there's a driver on the microcontroller where it can boot to the USB, allowing you to program it using a normal Arduino environment. And it's uh, pretty cool. It's all self-contained, so this would be a nice little thing to embed in future projects. And I believe they are selling them on their website, DigiStump, where you can buy them after the Kickstarter. So yeah. Yet another Kickstarter reward I can hold in the palm of my hand. The goal of this project is to do an overview of 1, 2, 3D design and make a 3D object we can use in the real world. In this case, we're going to make a simple Raspberry Pi enclosure. So here are the steps. We create a rough drawing of the enclosure with the measurements off the Raspberry Pi. We install Autodesk 1, 2, 3D design on our computer. It's a free program that you can download off the internet. We draw a sketch. A sketch is a two-dimensional version of what we're going to make in the program. From that sketch, we extrude it into a solid, and that's what will actually be 3D printed. We had features such as slots for the cards and holes for the um, headphone jacks and whatnot. We had screw holes so we can print it in two halves and bolt them together. And we 3D print the two halves. And finally, tap the holes so we can put screws through and assemble it. Let's go to the computer and get started. All right. Now we're going to take our drawing here and put it onto the screen. So we're going to start with 1, 2, 3D design. I'll just call it design from, from here on out. We're going to set our orientation to top. Now a design like this, you should always start with a sketch. A sketch is like a two-dimensional version of what you're going to make. That's what you usually see me making in Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to click on sketch here and go to rectangle. Now we're going to make a rectangle. Select sketch plane. Okay, so that's the main plane. Place first corner. Now see it'll snap to this um, half inch mark, so that's good. We're gonna do this all in English because that's just how I roll. Now we, we drew a rectangle here. Now let's type in the exact measurements we want. 3.346 by 2.212. All right, hit return again. That rectangle represents the PCB of the Raspberry Pi. Next measurement I'm gonna put in is where the SD card is. So it comes 0.715 down, 0.56 up. By having those two absolutes, we know the remaining width is how wide the SD card is. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here by using my mouse wheel. Click on sketch again. This time we want polyline, which is just a line. All right, so we select which plane we want, place the first point, should snap to the corner. See how there's a little ball there? Now we can make any angle we want, but we can click on here and it'll, it'll align to what's already there. 715 down, hit return again. Now you can see we have a little uh, anchor point there, which is good. The snap to function of any drawing program is your bestest buddy. You know, bring in a six pack of beer, do whatever it takes. It's your bestest friend. Okay, now the space that we have here represents the SD card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another rectangle which represents the SD card itself. I'm gonna start on that, come down here. When I touch that, then I can pull out this way and it will constrain the proportion. Now the length is highlighted, so I'm just gonna grab this real quick. Use my old dial caliper. I have a better one at home, but I leave that one at home. 0.696, okay. Hit return. There we go. Now on the screen, we have something that represents how far the SD card sticks out, which is good because we can make sure when we make our case around the motherboard that there's still room to grab the card. It's always important to think about things like that. I'm gonna add a few more features and then we'll come back to this. We have the SD card, USB hookup for power, HDMI, ethernet, USB, audio, 
and uh, composite video. So these show us not only where they are, but how far they stick out. So when we make our case, we know that there'll be room. So actually I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna come over here and click on this. It should be an offset path. See here, okay, offset, yep. Rectangle, so we wanna, uh, I'm on an offset of about, uh, well, not too much. It's like plane, it's like rectangle. So I'm gonna do this 0.063. 0.063, okay, zoom out, go back to rectangle, select it, select our plane, select our corner, then go from rectangle to rectangle, okay, we got that. Now that's the inside of our case, so this shape represents the circuit board, this represents the gap, now we need to add another rectangle around that to represent the thick wall that actually encloses it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, eighth of an inch should be good. Probably overkill, but whatever. So again, we're still in, we haven't done anything in 3D yet. We're still in sketch mode. You should make as many 2D features as possible. Then once you have everything you might possibly need, then extrude it to 3D. You'll have a lot more control over it that way. Make another rectangle. We might curve this rectangle, but for now we're just gonna make a rectangle. Okay. All right, now we have rectangles that represent everything. If you take a look at this outer rectangle here, you can see that some of the parts still exceed the end of the case, but other parts don't. Now I'm gonna go up to sketch and trim, which is this little doohickey here. I'm gonna remove, uh, remove whatever lines we don't really need, which is quite a few of them. Those there. What we have to figure out now is actually the openings we need for the parts. The HDMI jack itself is this wide, 0.77 inches. However, when you plug in the HDMI cable, you need more space. So our case has to accommodate this, not that. So what is that? Let's see. HDMI cable with the rubber harness, 0.775, let's say 0.8 just for, just to make it right. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna grab our rectangle here. Gonna do this, get that width, and then cut it in half. So our width is 0.59, okay, so we do that. Divide by two, okay, that gives us a center point. So then our width is 0.8, so we're gonna go from the center of that. So rectangle, select, we're gonna go, just enough to erase this. Of course, we're gonna want 0.4, because it's 0.8 divided by two. The reason we're doing it this way is so that we know that it's centered. A rectangle, place first corner, snap to here, 0.4. Okay. So now when we make our case, we open up this and that'll allow the HDMI cable to go through. Again, we're doing this all in sketch mode before we even move on to the three-dimensional stuff. So I'm gonna make those openings for the rest of the parts and then we'll move on to the extrusion. The electronics industry is evolving at a rapid pace. Professionals and hobbyists from all corners of the electronics world are coming to a significant realization. We could all use some assistance. Wouldn't it be nice if we could reach out and ask for expert advice when we need it? Our questions drive innovation, and thankfully, Element 14 provides us with a way to get the answers we need. With a community of over 100,000 engineers, Element 14 offers the fastest project solutions. Members can engage with more than 50 industry-leading experts. With dedicated technology and application groups, free technical documents and technology webinars, 24-5 technical support, and legislation advice, element14.com is the place to find experts with answers to get the job done. And now, back to the show. All right, here's our drawing. We have most of the surfaces in, and we also have openings for all the ports. So there's enough room here for the composite cable to get on. There's a gap for the SD card, an opening for the uh, USB and all that. 
Uh, one thing we should do before we move on though is we need screws so we can put this together. Right now this case will fit it, but there's no way to attach it. It could snap together, but screws would be better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extend the size of it a little bit. I'm going to uh, grab this rectangle here, go up here, and I'm gonna bring this up. Now if we use a size four screw English, uh, the head size would be about two, two okay. So if you go about two, point two five up, that should be good. So we're gonna add some girf to this. Ask your doctor. <laughs> okay, so go down here. Again, point two five. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna have to add some more openings for this, but for starters, let's just grab our. Uh, Okay, let's do it this way. Let's grab a, a poly line. Okay, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna go over, over, one, two, Then we're gonna go down, 0.125. Okay, we hit the button. And then we're gonna click on that and make a circle. Now, if we have a size four screw, it's approximately 0.11 inches. So we're going to make a hole that's 0.0, I'm going to make it 0.05, and this is a, I'm typing in the radius of the circle, not the diameter, so if it's 0.11 diameter, we want 0.55, but I'm going to make it a little smaller just so there's enough grip. So 0.05 diameter hole, okay, and I'm going to repeat that for all four sides. All right, I've got this to where I want it. I'm going to save a copy of this. I'm going to call it Pi Base because we're gonna use this to make the two different halves. So I've got pi base, now I'm going to resave it again as pi bottom. So the base file has how far we got. Now I'm going to be adjusting the bottom file without you know, messing up the base file. So I'm gonna change the screen orientation here. There we go. Now we're actually gonna start extruding it. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna have a base to the unit so it's gonna be a minimum of 0.125, but then we also have to think about the components on the bottom, which take up a certain amount of space. That's about 0.135. Then the board itself is 0.063. Then there's 0.62 of stuff on top, and then we need a top shell. But again, we're gonna have this in two pieces. So let me punch in some numbers here. Let's see, so I'm gonna take, basically we're gonna select all of the inside here including these other pieces. And this is a case where our sketch is probably a little more complicated than it needs to be, but that's all right. <laughs> okay. Now I'm uh, shift selecting these, so we get what we need. Because you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you, you'll get what you need. that. No, no, no. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's our, uh, basically our base. Oh, let's get this too. Okay, so we're going to hit this little uh, gear and extrude is an option. So we're going to extrude it up 0.125 inches. And now you see we've started to give it volume. All right. So the next thing we can do is Thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh yes, we're gonna start extruding the walls. So I'll do that now. I'm gonna fillet the edges. Not to be confused with like fillet a fish. All right, here's the bottom of our case with everything extruded. So you can only print in one direction, you print up. So if we wanna have overhangs, it's actually better to do that with the other side of the case. So on our screen here, you know, this has the bottom of it and there's big openings. So what we can do with our top piece is it can come down and it can have protrusions that fill in these blanks. Like it fills in the blank above the HDMI port and over here. So we'll save this as our bottom and then we'll use that original base sketch that we made to make our top and then they will hopefully link up together. Here we are in Replicator G. Replicator G is a standard program to print things to the MakerBot. We've loaded up our case here and we can see how it's going to look on the build platform. We wanna make sure that it's centered and on the platform so we hit move, center, put on platform. Now we're gonna generate the G code. We go up to G code, hit generate, select which profile we want, uh, right extruder, 
can use the high speed settings because I have the new firmware. All right. And it's going to take a few minutes to generate our G code because I don't think it uses hyperthreading for this particular generator. Hyperthreading is where it uses all the threads in your multiple core processors, which pretty much all computers have now, but this one's just single core. And anyway, once it's done processing, we'll just hit build and then the uh, replicator will start on the print. Okay, we have the bottom of our case design. Some of the pieces extend up and how that's going to work, it's on the case itself. The top half will have tabs that'll extend down here to fill these gaps. Uh, one thing I want to show you real quick is these holes. I want to have some holes in the side, just like these holes for the audio and video jacks. So I'm going to extrude them. I drew some circles. I'm going to click on the circle. When you extrude through an already solid object, it'll subtract from it. So I'll click these, I'll go extrude, and I will drag them through the walls, hit return, and we've cleared the object out. This looks like it's pretty much ready to print. So I'm going to export the STL file again and start the printer. Here's our printed top half of the case. Now we can go put the sides together. We'll start by tapping these holes. A tap is the thing that allows you to put the screw threads in a piece of material. Um, some materials you don't need to bother with this, but it is always a good idea, especially if you're doing something like metal, because um, you use this to put the screw threads in. That way you're not trying to force the screw through, which can cause it to break off, and then you're in more trouble. So you just basically tap this through. So a tap puts threads in a hole, and a die can put threads on a rod. Uh, there's a die right there. Not to be confused with die katana. So I'll just tap these four holes. All right, I have the sides tapped, so let's put this in place. Snap it in. Not the most elaborate case, but basically we just wanted to show you how this kind of stuff is done. There's some warping on the print, which these screws should do short work of. <laughs> Pulse pounding, screw driving action. If you want to be really nerdy, you could 3D print a belt clip, right? Go to Maker Faire and like, oh, I've got my Raspberry Pi right here on my hip. We're joined at the hip, as it were. So apparently you're Austin Powers. We took a design off paper, brought it into the free 123D Autodesk design program, expanded that or extruded it to make a three dimensional case, exported it to Replicator G, and then printed two halves to make a case for our Raspberry Pi. There's actually quite a few of these Raspberry Pi cases on Thingiverse if you want to download a design. This is just a quick and easy one we did to demonstrate how the 3D printing process works and how it is very accessible. Uh, you know, you can get the software for free. There's plenty of free programs. A Blender is a free program that you can use. OpenSCAD is another one. And then 3D printers, uh, they do have a bit of cost, but they start at around $500 for um, such as a printer bot. The printer bot has great quality. I've seen working keys printed with it. So it has, it's definitely something that's kind of come down. The economies of scale have brought it down to the point where it's something that can be actually in the hobbyist market. I mean, 500 bucks, yeah, it's a lot of money, but uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. I mean, you get a lot of enjoyment out of that $500.
Today's question comes from Justin who asks, I have a new two month old baby who loves her swing that plays music, but it only runs off C batteries. How can I make it run off 110 volt AC wall power? Okay, first count how many batteries it uses and multiply it by 1.5. That will tell you the total volts since it's 1.5 volts per battery. Next, find a DC wall wart close to that voltage. One from an old scanner, printer, or game system may work. Finally, use a multimeter to check the polarity and wire it in place of the batteries. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to do a tutorial about using a PIC32 microcontroller in your projects. It's like a super powered Arduino. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.